Hello and welcome to the Community Floodplain Solutions Flood Hazard Study Overview. My name is Julie Kuntz, Communications Specialist with Snohomish County and the Community Floodplain Solutions Program. Community Floodplain Solutions, or CFS, is a collaborative effort between the county and more than a dozen organizations, all working together to provide benefits for farm, fish, and flood interests. As part of our education and outreach efforts, we wish to share the results of flood hazard studies along the Lower Skykomish River. Your technical guide is Aaron Kopp, Water Resources Engineer with Snohomish County Surface Water Management. And with that introduction, Aaron, please take us through some of your work. Thank you, Julie. We have recently completed several studies pertaining to the potential flood hazards along the Skykomish River. The study area followed the Skykomish River along the cities of Gold Bar, Sultan, and Monroe downstream to the Snohomish River. The top portion of the map represents the Skycomish River from Monroe to Sultan, while the bottom represents the portion from Sultan to Gold Bar. This area has recently had flooding and repetitive loss properties. Recent studies help identify the greatest likelihood of flood hazards along the lower Skycomish River, including some severe hazards, which include areas of fast and deep floodwaters areas of lateral channel migration, which occurs when a river moves over time and naturally erodes one bank and deposits sediment along the opposite side, and areas of high avulsion potential, the rapid relocation of a channel across the floodplain. The highest risk areas are potential future river avulsions into currently dry land and are feeding into existing small channels that could or would rapidly expand. The avulsion pathway zones are shown in the blue shaded areas here and also up in here. Floodplain areas at risk behind levees such as the salt and training levee are shown in red. Potential avulsions were based on field data in the next greatest flood hazard category the deep and fast flows of a 10 year flood event. The blue shaded areas shown here, and also the side channels, represent water depths that are greater than three feet deep and are flow faster than three feet per second, creating a risk to public safety for adults walking in this area. A medium hazard area the judgment zone shown in green would require a personal decision before venturing out into floodwaters. The low hazard zone of the deep and fast flow was emitted from this figure for clarity. In the Pacific Northwest, climate change is expected to impact flooding in three ways, sea level rise, more intense heavy rains, and reduce snowpack, which will lead to higher winter flows and a 10% increase in peak flows by the year 2050 or mid-century, and by 22% in the 2080s or late century. The averages of the models produced by the UW Climate Impacts Group are shown here on the right as hydrographs of monthly stream flow. The main point is that there will be lower average summer flows and higher average winter flows in the future. The black line is the current flows, as in representing the current year. The future conditions are in red with the 2050s represented by the top chart and the 2080s below. The water year is shown beginning in October and running through September. Hydraulic and hydrologic studies noted that levied areas, particularly adjacent to Haskell and Riley sloughs, will experience more significant overtopping and greater inundation with this projected climate change impact. The change is noted with the orange and red shades here, orange being the increase in inundation extent in the mid-century or the year 
years 2050 and in the late century for the years 2080 and later. As part of the infrastructure assessment, we looked at 11 different structures. Here we are looking in detail at the topography around Haskell Slough and its levee. The condition of the levee in the assessment led to an emergency repair in 2020. Location of the levee is here. The shaded relief shown here represents the ground elevation above the river low flow water surface elevation. We call it a Hawes map for short, which stands for height above water surface. An aerial view of the same location is provided with this slide. This is a great example of a project location that holds opportunities for farm fish and flood benefits. To tell you more about how we are building common ground for these interests, I turn this presentation back to Julie. Thanks, Aaron. CFS is building common ground by working to support and protect diverse interests. We seek to help lower flood risk for residents and the farming community and increase salmon habitat. And we wish to do all of this without transferring the hazards to adjacent or downstream landowners. So we go to the next slide to talk about next steps. I'd like to preface those by telling you that CFS program partners have been exploring opportunities for restoration and conservation projects for many years. Our work requires the voluntary participation of landowners. We need you to establish a footprint for our projects. We are working now to identify properties that are eligible for easement and acquisition opportunities. If you have any questions about flood hazard studies or partnership opportunities, we would like to talk to you. And there's a couple ways we can do that. You can schedule a virtual office visit, and that's on our CFS webpage. There will be a link for that. It should be a, behind, below these videos. If that link to the virtual office hours is no longer available, you can always email us at any time at cfs.info at snowco.org. We hope this information was helpful, and thank you for your time.